Lincoln believes B2B marketing can be B2B brilliant, B2B bold, and B2B breakthrough. How? With a platform purpose built to make B2B marketing mean more for your business. A platform with tools to help you build better relationships with your key customers, to boost your buyer's journey while building your brand. A platform with trusted data and lead generation you need to beat your KPIs, drive ROI, and stand out amongst the competition. And with the targeting tools on LinkedIn, you can reach your precise audience right down to their job title, company name, location, and more to make sure your ads are always seen by those who matter. So let's get ready to be too boldly go where no marketer has gone before because LinkedIn is where B2B is everything you can be. Rethink your B2B marketing ads and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash mpn to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash mpn. Terms and conditions apply. Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, so the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs, and how we learn from adversity. Every week, I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneurs Enigma podcast. Today, I have a local to me. I just realized when I said I was about to say local, local to me, but a Philadelphia native, Ryan Perry of Brew You. It is an app that came out, correct me if I'm wrong, came out like right before the pandemic, right? Actually, it it really hit the ground. And Seth, good good to see you. Happy to be on the podcast How's here. How's it going, buddy? Uh, we really hit the ground running um, around november december of 2020 so we were you know in the throes of everything. you were in the thick of it yeah oh my mm-hmm. god yeah so ryan is a, this is a great entrepreneurial story because people can do entrepreneurship and they can have a full-time job yeah. you can still be an entrepreneur it's, a, it's what we call a side hustle <laughs> and which eventually hopefully will become a full hustle of course you know a full-time hustle and that stuff like that but that's how some people some people go head first like saying i'm just going to do this other people are like, let's have a safety net. Let's build this thing out. Let's see if it's viable. Let's see how it works. And you took the latter, which I think is a very, always a, a very smart way of doing it, you know, making sure that, you know, you get nine to five and then five to nine, you know, kind of thing. And then having a good partner, as you said, we talked before, having a good partner that lets you work on your side hustle after, you know, after the full hustle. Right. So, Ryan, what is Brew You? Or what was Brew You supposed to be, and then what did it turn into? Yeah, so that's that's a great question. So Brew You, in its most literal sense, is an app to buy beers, whether it's for yourself or for a friend. We created a utility that through your phone, you would be able to buy your favorite beer, a martini, a shot, whatever it may be, for yourself to help skip the line, or for, let's say, Seth, it's your birthday, or you're just promoted, or side hustle turned into full-time hustle and we wanted to celebrate, mm-hmm. I could send you that drink. The location is paid. All you do is go in, show them the phone, show them the app, and they would give you the drink. So no more That's tabs, awesome. no more anything like that. You know, there kind of cuts out the anxiety of having to wait to get your credit card back. So, yeah, Oh, God, I've, left my, I've actually left my credit card at Man Young Brewery <laughs> and I live in Doylestown and I had to drive all the way back. And now they do what they do is I think they do like a virtual tab. They give you your card back but they leave it open. Sure. But this was back in twenty twelve. I don't think I don't think they had the technology it's amazing. Twenty twelve you think that we had that technology, but you think back in like two thousand one, you know, two thousand in the early aughts, we didn't have smartphones. No. And it's it's so, it's so weird. And now, look, you can buy people beers on your smartphone for crying out Sure. Loud. I mean, you think about you can book a hotel, you can find a taxi or, mm-hmm. you know, Uber, how you kind of disrupt some of these industries just with uh, this little thing in your hand now. It's amazing. So that's that That was the goal. And then so you started this literally like when did the, when did the idea pop in your head? Yeah. Was it in 2020 or was it a little I, – it sounds like it was a little bit before – the whole craziness happened. It was. It was. We were at a bar in South Philly, 3rd and Catherine. Shout out to New Wave uh, Cafe. Um, we were there with the, my other founders a couple hours uh, past a happy hour. 
And we were actually trying to get somebody off the couch uh, to come out and join us. And he was going to go through a tough time, whatever it may be. So we wanted to give him a little camaraderie. And so we figured if we could be able to send him a drink, maybe that would be the impetus for him Mm -hmm. to come out. But if we send him a Venmo, let's say 10 bucks, what would be a shot and a beer, he would just pocket it right into his uh, his bank account. So we thought of... Especially if you're in that mindset, yeah. Especially if you're in that mindset of like, you know, tough breakup or whatever it was, you know... you, you, you know, you do, you're like, I'll deal with this later, pocket it, and then never then forget you have that money, you know? Yeah, so us, you know, the altruistic fellows that we were, we figured if we'd be able to create something that we would buy that drink for our friend, and he'd have to come down to the bar re- to redeem it, because <laughs> the bar has already been paid for it right up front. He could come in, he sits down, he says, I have a, you know, a shot and a beer waiting for me, and good to go. And that was really where it kicked off. So once the fog of the That's next, wild. once the fog wore off from the next day, we figured, yeah, let's uh, let's actually flesh this out a little bit and see what it could look like, and talk to people in our markets. Thought it was a great idea, and then we really pushed forward with the development mm-hmm. on the tech side, and and now we're you know in 2022 and have something that you can use. We're gonna take a quick break here from our sponsors and get right back to the show. LinkedIn believes B two B marketing can be B two brilliant. B2 Bold, and B2 Breakthrough. How? With a platform purpose-built to make B2B marketing mean more for your business. A platform with tools to help you build better relationships with your key customers, to boost your buyer's journey while building your brand. A platform with trusted data and lead generation you need to beat your KPIs, drive ROI, and stand out amongst the competition. And with the targeting tools on LinkedIn, you can reach your precise audience right down to their job title, company name, location, and more to make sure your ads are always seen by those who matter. So let's get ready to be too boldly go where no marketer has gone before because LinkedIn is where B2B is everything you can be. Rethink your B2B marketing ads and get $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to LinkedIn.com slash MPN. To claim your credit. That's LinkedIn.com slash MPN. Terms and the conditions apply. It's amazing. And it's amazing because you joke about how the fog lifts <laughs> from you know the drinking. And then that kind of proves like if you remember your idea after the yeah. fog lifts, maybe there's something there. Yes. Maybe it's something. And then that's like it's like if you remember the details, the back of the napkin's still there, it's not covered in beer and in the garbage <laughs> can somewhere. Like, I mean, it's clearly, it's, it's you know, I always think back to what, these one-purpose pur- utilities. I'm like, and I think to Alton Brown on the Food Network where he's always like, have a multi-purpose tool. Yeah. But I'm like, sometimes you, with these phones, it's not taking up space on your countertop. It's not, you know, having these one-purpose tools are, are fantastic because it's like, it does this. It does this. And it does this well. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to worry about, oh, it kind of does it. And it's like, ah, uh, kind of half the time doesn't do it. So... It's really neat. So how did you, like, so the pandemic hit. Sure. You're in the throes of the pandemic. You're in the throes of the development. And so how did, how did that affect you as a side hustle entrepreneur? Uh, yeah, that's a, well, that's a great question. Um, we were all thrown into this, like, crazy state, right? You know, we're, we're, going, we're stuck at home. If you're going out to the grocery store, you're basically, like, wrapping gloves around yourselves, putting a trash bag on, wearing masks. You don't know what's coming back. And we're seeing restaurants, bars, breweries all around us just, you know, starting GoFundMes or starting all of these things to try to keep help them, us. Yeah, help yeah. us, right? Help the staff. And it was a really tough story for anybody that was in that in the restaurant mm-hmm. and service industry uh, to make it through was, was, you know, you needed everybody to kind of help lift up. Now, mm-hmm. from the business, from, from the, the app itself, it helped because – you could now keep your business open beyond the four walls of you know your physical location, right? So now you have an extra revenue mm-hmm. source where 24-7, I'd be able to buy Seth a drink. The business is paid up front. And then, of course, you have a future customer that comes in. Whether you're closed or not, that could hopefully help on the mm-hmm. bottom line for a bar, brewery, or restaurant to um, – you know, lift them up a little bit. Maybe they don't have to rely so much on the GoFundMe. They can sell these future drinks and they wouldn't, you know. Yeah. yeah. Now, but when you think about, when you think about that though, because I mean, a lot of people are like, well, now you have these gift cards all out there. You have to redeem now that everything's opening up again. Oh crap. Mm-hmm. But when you think about the, when you think about liquid, you have it there anyhow. You have it there anyhow. And when you think about the margins that these guys have yeah. on these drinks. Right. They're pretty good. Like, it, it, it's, 
you lose a little bit of margin like cause it's later on inflation changes all of that stuff yeah. but i see it more viable that way than buying someone a burger and the burger prices change but you still have to redeem you still have to honor that gift card kind of thing uh that's a great point so our our value add to the businesses is that you know every every bar stool or seat in a restaurant or bar has a dollar amount above it, right? The general managers, the owners know that for every person that sits in that seat, they're going to obviously buy, you know, maybe even another drink, they'll get some food, maybe they'll walk out with a six pack, they'll mm-hmm. buy some merch, whatever. It's all about getting people into this in into the location. And Brew You was able to do that because again, you're buying these drinks ahead of time, people have that reason to go in and, and check out a new place or go back to an old hot mm-hmm. and they'll spend more than the 45 50 cents the one or two drinks exactly yeah. exactly and when you think yeah when you think about it you think that you know I mean, you go in there you and you, but you're committed to one type of item it's not like you bought some gift card to mccafferty's or to giant <laughs> these are all local yeah you know, i know Kroger i know mccafferty's Midwest. Yeah. you know mccafferty's you know, <laughs> but the, you know our listeners are from all over the place you, know, you go to a supermarket it's not defined to a specific item right this is like encouraging social interaction, which is really important, especially now that we're kind of in the throes of an endemic. Mm-hmm. You know, this is never going to end, but we're all kind of like, all right, we're dealing with this, this little bugger out there. Yeah. And, you know, it's a great way to kind of say, hey, I need a beer. Let me skip the line. Let me just buy my beer ahead of time. It's kind of like the Uber for beers. Hey, you said that. I'll, I'll, I'll run with it. I love that. Thanks. <laughs> You'll run with it. I like that. <laughs> So here's a question for you, because you, this is your side hustle, mm-hmm. you know, maybe maybe growing to be a bigger hustle. Mm-hmm. But um, what is the scariest thing? Well, actually, let's start on the positive side. What's the best thing about being an entrepreneur, especially when you have it as a side hustle? Yeah. Uh, wow, well, that's a, a great point, especially because the side hustle becoming a full hustle, hopefully, it is, it, and that's the plan, is the freedom, right? Uh, you know, a lot mm-hmm. does come come on to, on to you, you know, but there's there's a leadership aspect to it. There's an execution. There's this point of where you just feel as if you know you're putting all your cards in the middle of the table even with a side hustle because at the end of the day you're focused yeah. on this being what you want to do you want you want to work for yourself you want to lead mm-hmm. other people into something that's going to be um i would say uh, a, a good investment a good business to be you know partner with mm-hmm. and that's at the end of the day i mean you work you're an entrepreneur you you talk to entrepreneurs mm-hmm. on a day-to-day basis it's that freedom of of Doing what you want to do, what you believe in, and how you think you can help your community, and um, and setting yourself up, creating a legacy, if that's something you're interested in. Yeah. So then let's flip it this way. Since like, like what what gives you pause? Because you know you're you have your full time job, and you know hopefully you enjoy it and all that. But what gives you pause about saying, "I right, brew you is going to be the full time gig now"? Like, what gives you pause? When, like, not the scariest thing about entrepreneurship. Because you're kind of you kind of have the safety net now, right now. I mean, it's clearly a scary thing is not having that safety net. Mm-hmm. But what gives you pause beyond that? That's a great question, right? You know, it's it's the keeping. It's all of those things that keep a lot of entrepreneurs mm-hmm. up at night, right? You know, the safety net is there because we're all bootstrappers. We haven't taken a single mm-hmm. dollar. We haven't taken wow. a single dollar from anyone. We've we've put all of our own. You know, hopefully money where our mouth is here uh, to to go out yeah. there and, and, and do that. So from a financial aspect, of course, you know, that that's one thing, right, to have that safety net mm-hmm. there. I think secondarily, um, you know, you have to come to terms with knowing that, like, you're you're committed to yourself. You believe in yourself and knowing what you're going to do, because while there's going to be some really great moments, there's a lot of low moments in being an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. It's very peaks and valleys and trying to stay the course is sometimes pretty tough because, you know, I'm pretty like exuberant, right? I can go, a li- I can get a little mm-hmm. too high and get a little too low on some things. So just kind of finding that nice Zenness is really medium. medium is better than Zen. I'm yeah, that might not work. You want to have some drive here, it might, but uh, but it's yeah, yeah. Little, you don't be too Zen, you want yeah. some drive. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can be Zen, but you, even with some Zen, even with the with the you know, finding the happy medium, you want to have some Zen sometime where you can just take a break and it's like, oh. and I think. I think that's a really good point, again, is because I've, I think of it and I want things to get done quickly, right? I, I yeah. see an opportunity. I want to seize it. Mm-hmm. If there's an app development or there's there's a, a prospect out there or there's an opportunity to grow the business, it's like, let's get going right now. While realizing that, like, you take a step back, you let some things open up for you, it's a better opportunity in the mm-hmm. long run. But 
you know, that's yeah. part of learning, right? You want to make the right decisions mm-hmm. and it's not just the short term. It's about setting yourself up for the long term. Awesome. So what is the most important thing to carry with you all the time? <laughs> Physically or just like what I go wherever you want with this? Uh, yeah. So I'll do, I guess, a, a physical and a mental aspect. Um, my mental yeah. aspect that I carry with me every time is that because of the nature of what we do with this this app is that everybody's a potential customer, right? So really kind mm-hmm. of flying the flag of what we do if the conversation lends to itself, everyone is potentially in your market. So you can get an idea and a mm-hmm. lot of input about how this could work, right? So I'm a very much marketer, but also someone who is very in tune with just learning about how people operate, whether it's buying a drink mm-hmm. or how they interact with their friends, it's their social cues and aspects is something I'm always, mm-hmm. so I carry myself with just a, a natural um, curiosity for for how people work, and and that's a little tougher in this day and age, just because a lot of people are, yeah. you know, how it goes. But um, and then physically, I just always have my notebook on me, right? I'm, I'm even yeah. though I we operate yeah. something that's directly on the phone, I still am a little bit old school in trying to keep my notes down on on, on a lot of that because as you, you think about like you know your ideas pop into your head and they're fleeting they fleet very quickly so if you don't get something especially with, with some bruising yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah they come and go you know you get pretty loquacious after some some beers and then you just don't remember yeah. a lot of uh what was <laughs> but exactly yeah. exactly so uh those would That's be two awesome. things yeah physically my notebook and then mentally it's just uh, the natural curiosity to learn about people because you know they could be customers that's awesome so where can people, I mean, if people want to try out Brew mm-hmm. You, you're, you're on at the Apple App Store, and thank you. You're also on Google, Play. the place, the place <laughs> or whatever the hell it's called. Yeah. The they change the name constantly. The Droid Store. You're on yeah. both. Yeah. But the, 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 but the idea is that, you know, a lot of people say, oh, we're going to do it on one platform and not Google right away because Google is on every, there's so many different variables. Mm-hmm. And I'm very pleased to say you're on both. And so what is it? It's B-R-U-Y-O-U. Right. right? Yep dot com and then you can click on there and find go to the the stores and we'll have the links to the stores sure. too so people can just go to the show notes to it but um where else can people find out more about you and what you're doing and follow you online and that kind of yeah stuff? that thanks uh so of course we have your know, social media accounts you know our instagram is brew you app mm-hmm. brew you underscore app uh you can find it find it there the website's brew you app.com and then of course you know oh, a yeah. simple simple google search you'll be able to find some things i mean predominantly yeah. for us a lot of the locations we work with you may just happen to pop in and see our our uh you know a flyer on the wall oh, or nice a coaster that says download brew you buy a drink for someone buy a drink for yourself so a lot of it you know trying to stay front you know, as best we can that's awesome so. oh that's great so ryan thanks so much for being on the show of this has been fun Seth, I appreciate and trying to, and we're recording this right now and it's a freaking heat wave <laughs> yeah. so stay cool i'll buy you a beer we can go get a, a quick, a quick cold go. one real quick all right yeah exactly we'll, we'll definitely chat right buddy all right seth thanks man i appreciate being on the podcast today Be well have a good day that was a great show hey if you're enjoying entrepreneurs enigma please give us a review on the podcast trusted of your choice we're on all of them and these reviews really help others find the show also if you're getting value from the show and want to buy me a coffee go to the show notes and click on the link to help me stay awake while i bring you more great episodes to your ears that's in the show notes, and I look forward to the next episode. Take care, guys. Goldstein Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is one of the many great shows on the MPN Marketing Podcast Network. This podcast is coming to you on MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. There's another show on MPN you might want to check out. I'm Dave Delaney, the host of The Nice Podcast. Each episode is about communication, collaboration, and becoming better leaders of today's fastest growing tech companies. Subscribe to The Nice Podcast today. It'll make your marketing that much smarter. Just visit nicepodcast.co or search for The Nice Podcast with Dave Delaney wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.